outside of Japan, um, most of the Western and international observers of Japan <clears throat> have kind of been fixated on the bank debt issue. Um, and since that issue has been uh, so intractable, so difficult, so hard to resolve, I think that uh, there's a tendency uh, by many outsiders to say, well, nothing's happening in Japan. You know, nothing's changing. Uh, there's been no progress. Um, could you talk about what progress has been made? What are the changes in accounting policy, regulatory policy, trade policy, and other policies that have actually occurred over the last two or three years? What's actually gotten done? Well, in order to finalize the so-called non-performing loan problems, we have to realize three points, I believe. First of all, we should get much more accurate asset assessment. Asset assessment is a very important starting point. Well, to some extent in the past, this uh, important part of the non-performing loan was hidden. It will not be revealed regrettably. Now we have very strict asset assessment system. Uh, in that process also, we are going to employ, uh, for example, this little bit technical discount cash flow method, and this will also help to uh, get much more uh, accurate assessment. And also, bank has his own, own assessment, and the financial service agency authority has its own assessment. There used to be a huge gap between that. About two years ago, this gap was about 40% uh, level or so. But now, it's decreasing. There were, after my assignment, I decided to announce, to publish the discrepancy of this self-assessment of the banks and the uh, assessment of the authority. So this is now bringing about a very positive pressure on the banks. Uh, also, another important point is uh, to strengthen the corporate governance. Very interestingly, in the 1990s, the major banks have been increasing their loans to sectors, to the sectors whose profitability has been decreasing. It, it, is an, it is completely against the rule of maximizing their profits. Uh, but wh why this kind of thing happened? Maybe one answer would be, well, still, a bank has, at that time was, uh, had a sense of some convoy system, and the so-called very sound corporate governance didn't work. But now, uh, we have a much more uh, with stronger supervision system. And now, this is the reason why uh, the banks started uh, changing. Well, some banks are now considering mergers, acquisition, as I mentioned. Also, some others are considering a uh, very ambitious scale of fundraising. But important point is now they ha just started uh, to show some sign of recovery. The result, the outcome is important. Uh, the Japanese accounting period will end the end of March, quite soon, in about two months. So for the coming two months will be quite important for the banking authority, also the major banks. We are now in the middle of very rapid changes. We are watching the banks very carefully. Uh, so another part, important part for a bank reform will be to strengthen their equity part. Uh, some are analysts are saying, well, uh, banks are suffering from equity shortage. Now, if some banks suffer from this equity shortage, if some banks are a kind of in danger, government is not reluctant to inject capital. This was also announced, already announced. Uh, this again, this announcement, again, is providing another strong, uh, sound pressure on the corporate governance of the banks. Let's go beyond the banks a little bit uh, and, and talk about the issue of prices, which has really captivated, again, a lot of the attention of, of many observers. On the one hand, the, the, I think it was well understood that, that one of the problems in Japan was there was a lot of uh, uh, regulatory barriers and protectionist barriers that were leading to artificially high prices, uh, for uh, local products, for certain imports, uh, that the, these barriers that were holding up prices were raising the cost of living in Japan, they were raising the cost of doing business in Japan. 
And what we've seen over the last couple of years is a lot of these areas have been tackled. Uh, and we actually see prices falling. We see large retailers, we see discount stores, uh, we see imports from Japan, uh, from China bringing down the cost. Uh, so on the one hand, the fact that prices are declining in Japan would seem to be a very healthy sign that a restructuring process is going on. On the other hand, uh, there's a widespread concern that, that Japan is facing an issue of deflation, and this deflation is a great threat. Uh, so is, 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 is there a, def a deflation threat? Is this healthy? Is it unhealthy? What do you plan to do about it? Well, as an economist, I'd like to say deflation is anytime, anywhere, bad. We have to distinguish the relative price change and absolute price change. You mentioned, well, for some products in Japan, where the price level was quite high, relatively high, uh, but what we see is the changes or decline of absolute price level. Relative price change should happen even from now, but we have to control the absolute price level to the moderate level. Actually, maybe two years ago, we had a very uh, active discussion inside Japan. Uh, whether deflation is good or bad. Some people say, for some part, this is good deflation. This is bad deflation. But I'd like to say, all deflation are bad. Uh, because, well, many uh, companies and households now have debt, loans. Assume, well, if, uh, please assume that you're operating a company, you say the product price goes down, and the material price goes down. In this case, profitability will not be damaged so much, but you have huge amount of debt. The real value of debt will be increased under such kind of deflation. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a lot of heavy debted companies and almost all houses, households have loans. In this sense, the deflation is really bad. We have to fight against this deflation. Because of deflation, the non-performing loan is newly created, and because of non-performing loan, the deflation occurs. Uh, this kind of vicious circle uh, between deflation and non-performing loan should be uh, broken. Uh, there are many reasons for uh, the declining trend of this uh, price. One reason would be demand shortage. I do not deny this aspect, but according to estimate, GDP gap, or supply demand gap is uh, around 3% level, not very high compared with the past recession period. There could be another reason, supply side problem. Well, the personal computer price goes down and uh, we now import a lot from China. We cannot stop that. This is basically a good thing for consumers. The third reason, so we should consider, that is, well, deflation it's basically a monetary phenomenon. In the 1980s, uh, the money supply growth rate was around 10% in Japan. In 90s, however, growth rate was 2.6%. Right now, money supply growth rate will be around 3%. I do not think this is high enough. So the role of Bank of Japan is now quite important. Uh, based upon the discussion in the past, we also had a uh, serious discussion inside the cabinet. Now, I believe Prime Minister Koizumi well understands the importance and the need for active monetary policy. Uh, quite soon, Prime Minister Koizumi will nominate new governor of Bank of Japan. And in his uh, selection, uh, this kind of factor will be very seriously concerned, I believe. Thank you. We, we've talked about the bank debt and the process of resolving that. You've been quite clear about how, how you're going about it. We've talked about the importance of monetary policy and the, and the new governor of, of the Fed, uh, of the Japanese Fed. What are the other critical barriers that need to be addressed to hold back, to, to, to get the Japanese economy moving? If we put aside those two big issues, what are, th are there other issues, or are those really the key issues? Well, the most important uh, factor to revitalize the Japanese economy would be uh, to accelerate deregulation. Well, 
the discussion with deregulation in Japan started about 20 years ago. For these 20 years, we have been repeatedly, repeatedly discussing uh, the need for deregulation. But still, this is not enough. Many people recognize this is not enough. Uh, and based upon this uh, result, we now are going to start a new system that is a uh, uh, specially deregulated zone. In the case of China, for example, this is a socialist country. When they introduced a capital market, a capitalist country system or a market economy system, they assigned, uh, for example, Gandong province as a free area or specially deregulated area. Uh, we are going to have this kind of system. Of course, Japan is not a socialist country, uh, but uh, anyway, special zone system we are going to have. The registration law was already approved uh, in the diet, and this will soon, uh, this will start quite soon, in about two months or so. And at this moment, 400 cities and towns are making use of this special zone system. I really believe this will accelerate the speed of deregulation. Uh, I'd like to see the very success uh, examples in this uh, special zones, and consequently this deregulation uh, will be spread over all, uh, all over Japan. Uh, deregulation is, uh, anyway, an important point. Another difficult task for us is how to manage budget deficit. Uh, the uh, structural reform, the content of structural reform is mostly a uh, policy package to strengthen supply side. Yes, this is important to strengthen supply side. At the same time, I have to pay reasonable attention on the demand control, demand side problems. Uh, now, the Japanese government carries uh, budget deficit about 7% of total GDP, 7% of total GDP. Uh, but we have the, the, the budget deficit at this moment is not sustainable anymore, anymore. So we have to restore the primary balance of budget. I'd like to restore that in about 10 years. Uh, at the same time, the economy is very weak, so we have to pay reasonable attention on the demand side uh, control in the short run. Also, we, ha we, we have to realize uh, the uh, we have to restore the primary balance in about 10 uh, years. Uh, this is a very narrow path, but we now have a very explicit economic program, uh, macroeconomic and uh, fiscal policy program in this regard. So, as you mentioned, implementation is now quite important to realize uh, the very difficult two targets. We're running out of time, but we have a lot of foreign investors in the room. A lot of uh, corporate leaders uh, who uh, are interested in what's going on in Japan or potential suppliers of capital uh, uh, who are investors in Japan. Japan has a shockingly low level of out, out foreign investment coming in, uh, direct foreign investment. Uh, is Japan interested in foreign investment? Uh, is Japan welcoming foreign investment? Uh, uh, is there a consensus that foreign investment is uh, a, a part of the solution to Japan's problems? Uh, what, what would you say to that? We really welcome uh, the foreign uh, capital, not only capital, but also uh, management know-how. Uh, we are ready to accept, and basically uh, we already have some good examples of uh, Nissan automobile, and also in the banking se sector, uh, we already have foreign capitals. Uh, very uh, sound competition, uh, the domestic capital and sound, uh, foreign capital will be, again, uh, will create much more uh, opportunities for both of us. So I really welcome uh, the participation from foreign country in many ways. Great. Well, we're basically out of time. The minister is literally in Switzerland for five hours, and uh, he's going to have to go back to, uh, to attend the diet meetings. Uh, I think all of us uh, have, uh, uh, we should thank him for his, uh, his time and his honesty and, and wish him well, uh, because the success of, of his policies and uh, uh, Prime Minister Koizumi's policies, I think, are going to have a big impact on what happens, not just in Japan, but outside. So thank you very much, Minister.